Welcome to Muddy's Whitetail Watch. I'm going to be keeping an eye over my shoulder uh, during this installment too, just like the last one. I'm in a morning stand and today is the beginning of Thanksgiving week. This is generally what I figure to be the last good week of morning hunts during the rut. I always figure sometime after the 26th or so of November, there's still a little bit of rut activity going on, but they aren't cruising nearly as much. The morning hunts now, if you're really serious about getting the extra hours in, you need to be almost right on top of those bedding areas. It doesn't seem like there's much movement, like I said. There's not much cruising around. The funnels and the travel areas, uh, they don't seem as active. And you know, I'm not the, the end all expert on this rut hunting, but it always seems like this is the week when things start to die. The, uh, if you think about it, you know, these bucks have been running now for about a month. This would be like a football player coming off a long season, uh, play the Super Bowl. All he wants to do is lay on the couch, get up and eat once in a while and go back and lay on the couch again until he starts to recover. That's what the bucks are doing. They're laying up, but they are feeding. So that's the point that I'm gonna to get to here, is the opportunity does still exist for good hunts in the evenings. The bucks are definitely gonna feed heavily, even as the rut is starting to wind down. So I'm, I'm excited about that, because a lot of times we'll find more consistent hunting on the food as the rut is winding down, than what we've had all season long up to that point. So I've got uh, a number of different types of food sources on the farm. I've got brassicas, I've got clover, I've got soybeans. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have corn. If you've got corn, you know, pick corn, or you know, ideally standing corn, that's where the deer are gonna be going during this phase of, of you know, regaining their strength. Uh, the, the bucks are going to hit the carbohydrates from the corn. Not to say that they won't hit those other food sources. They're going to go to the best food source in the area. But if you've got corn, uh, that's that's the place to be. Because that's definitely what the deer are going to zero in on. I'll be focused on beans over the next few days, uh, right until the, the firearm season comes in. But from here on out, it's really all about the food now. And next week I'll talk a little bit more about some of the strategies for hunting the late season food sources, but uh, it's gonna be like a broken record now for the next month or so. Every single episode now, I'm gonna be talking about the importance of finding food and how to hunt those spots. Now for my tip, uh, I started talking a little bit, I think it was last week, about how we set up in the tree with our cameras, where we put the stands, and uh, how we position ourselves in the tree to get the best video. I want to talk a little bit more now uh, about just how to place a tree stand for hunting. Forget about the camera. You're out there by yourself. Uh, you're, you've done some scouting. You've decided that you've got the right area figured out. But the next step is to find that perfect tree. And unfortunately, it's, it's rare that you'll find the perfect tree on your first effort. Uh, you know, I've learned over the years that the perfect stand location is a uh, process. It, it's a, it's a, like a learning curve that you have to have in that particular area because there's so many different variables that make for a great stand. Just sitting over excellent deer sign isn't enough because that's usually where we start. You know, we pick an area and we think, oh, this should be a good funnel. The deer should be moving through here during the rut. Then you go and you'll find that heavy trail and you put your stand there on the downwind side, you know, prevailing downwind side of that heavy trail. But the problem you run into is the deer are getting downwind of you or you can't get to and from that spot without bumping deer. And then little by little, you start eliminating different spots. And, and the best way to do that is just to be really observant while you're in the tree. You know, look at every single deer that goes past. Uh, what's, what is their pattern? What is their tendency? And eventually, after a while, 
you start to put together a uh, sort of a, a feeling of you know this tree in this part of the ridge or this tree on this part of the bench or the saddle or whatever uh, type of location you're hunting has the most deer movement within bow range and it's a spot that you can get to and from without bumping any deer and it just takes it can take years unfortunately to find that perfect tree so be patient I guess that's the main thing I'm trying to get across here is uh, don't assume that just because you picked a spot that made sense the first time in that that's the spot that you need to be hunting for the rest of your life keep an open mind and be willing to move uh, still nothing that's pretty much it uh, for this week I was kind of hoping that that uh, just by talking to the camera that would be enough to encourage a buck to walk past but didn't work for me this morning we'll stick it out for a few more hours here but uh, keep in mind that it's time to start hunting those food sources find the best food in the area hunt it carefully in the evenings and you can have some really good late rut hunting well I appreciate you joining me this week I'll see you back here again next week for the next episode of Muddy's Whitetail Watch. <laughs>